video editing has now become the cheat code for instant growth on social media and learning how to edit the videos the right way will open new doors for you to maximize your earning potential so in this video i'm gonna lay the five step framework that anyone can follow to learn the skill of video editing in 2025 i will guarantee you there will be at least one thing that you will find valuable in this five step framework so make sure that you watch till the end You see, when I started out with editing videos, I was only using Premiere Pro for literally everything that I do. And the more and more videos that I start to edit just with Premiere Pro, I realized that there's a limitation that you can go with Premiere Pro. Because when it comes to animation and using graph, it becomes so much harder for you to do that. It becomes really hard to access the graph. And once we have too many transform effects, your software will tend to lag and crash a lot. And then I came to the solution, which was I basically done all the cuts inside of Premiere pro and i also did all the sound design adding background music and all sort of things in premiere pro all of my motion graphics and animation was done inside of after effects so what i basically did was i separate my video into different sections i have my intro and in my body i have certain sections right so i basically export these certain sections separately i import that into after effects and i basically made all my motion graphics and all my animations inside of after effects and then i have realized this was something really game changing because this has allowed me to make better and really cool motion graphics and animations because there's a lot of control that you can go with After Effects. There's a lot of effects that you can add. There's a lot of control when it comes to animations and the graph as well as the velocity. And it was also really easy for me to edit and make these animations within After Effects. And once I actually tried to do that in Premiere Pro, it was not the best. And that's why I will tell you to choose the right software for each purposes. So basically, I would recommend you to use Premiere Pro for color grading, sound design and all the cuts and once you do that export each section individually import that into After Effects and use After Effects to make all the motion graphics and animations trust me on this this will actually help you to make better and high quality videos and animations and also it will help you to edit videos more efficiently This is probably the most stressful process when it comes to actually editing a video. For me personally, this is the part that I hate the most because most of the time I'm not getting enough creative ideas for me to actually visualize what I'm saying in my video in a way that people will actually watch the video. So here's the thing, there's actually no solution for this problem. There's only a way that you can actually reduce this because not all the time you will get creative ideas. But if you can know the process on how to get the ideas, then it becomes easy for you to get the ideas, take the inspiration and just increase include that in your video so the one thing that you need to do once you face this problem is you need to maximize your inspiration potential you see nothing on this world is original at least according to this book so what you need to do you need to maximize your inspiration potential so you will get enough inspiration from other people so you can add your own twist and you can incorporate that in your video to make it look original and unique and there's many ways that you can do that and the best way that i would recommend for you to do and this is the way that i do as well which is actually using your own creativity and the things that you like once you got the inspiration for example i personally like simple minimalistic and kind of like clean type of vibes so what i always try to do once i got this inspiration i try to include what i like and my creativity into this inspiration so i can edit that so i can show that for you guys and you guys will think that is original but i'm the only person who knows i just add my own twist and I just make it look original. Please know that I'm not saying for you to copy anyone. I'm just saying to get inspiration. Maximize your inspiration potential because that is the main thing that will actually get you and give you really creative ideas that you can use in your video once you're editing. Because trust me, if you don't know how to actually visualize whatever the voiceover is saying, then sooner or later you will actually procrastinate a lot. I know that is really hard, so make sure that you maximize your inspiration potential. This step is really important for you to get the most from the time that you invest to edit a video. So there's two main things that you need to do to build a workflow. First, you need to add the shortcuts that you will use the most. When it comes to Premiere Pro, I would say there's only like three main shortcuts that I like to use most of the time. All right, so we are in Premiere Pro right now. As you guys can see, I'm just editing the video that you're actually watching. So all you got to do is actually to add your custom shortcuts is go into edit right here and go into keyboard shortcuts. So basically the first shortcut that you need to add is for nesting clips so all you got to do just search for nest in this search bar and right under here which which is shortcut when you click on that little box and then you can add your custom shortcut so right now i have set my shortcut for one so you can basically add your own shortcut and then just 
press ok for example let's say that i want to actually nest these two clips then all i got to do i need to select these two clips and i just press one on my keyboard and as you guys can see it will basically nest my clips without me going to basically right click and just click on this nest button and then we have another shortcut which is actually for ripple delete so basically search for ripple delete and as you guys can see you can add your shortcut right here i have set my shortcut for z so basically i use my right hand to actually control my mouse and i use my left hand to basically do you know to access my keyboard so if i can actually have the shortcuts that i will be always using into my left hand side then that will be really easy for me to actually edit much faster and i know most of you guys actually use your left hand to control your keyboard so if you can actually add a really easily accessible shortcut with your left hand side then it can actually save you a lot of time and that is why for ripple delete i have set my shortcut for z so i can basically do all the cuts and then i can select the clip that i need to remove and i press z and i can basically remove that so let me show you how i actually do that inside of premiere pro this is basically how i do my cuts so i get my razor tool by pressing c on my keyboard and i do a cut right here the normal way of doing this is by basically deleting that and then right clicking on this gap and click on ripple delete but instead of actually doing that what you can actually do is basically you can go to the point where you need to add a cut move your playhead to the point where it just selects the clip that you want to delete and then all you got to do just press the key that you have set for ripple delete which is z on my shortcut or in my keyboard and as you guys can see it just delete the clip that i want to delete and it also closed down all the gaps which is really time saving and this is kind of like a new shortcut that you can actually use and i don't think many of you guys actually know you can add the shortcut and that is to actually ease in and ease out keyframes at default there is no shortcut for you to do that so all you got to do is basically just again go into edit and then in the search bar you need to search for ease in and then just scroll down a bit and then you will see something called under effects control panel keyframe temporal interpolation and keyframe temporal interpolation so basically the first shortcut is for ease in keyframes and the second shortcut is for ease out keyframe so basically as you guys can see i have set my shortcut for w and e so just set the shortcut that you want to actually use and then just press ok and now i will show you the use case of this and this is really useful and this comes really handy when you're actually doing this in premiere pro when you're actually like animating certain things so if i go into my effects controls i add a keyframe for let's say a scale if i select this and i press w it just make that keyframes and ease in keyframe and then if i go to the other keyframe and i select that and i press e that just make that keyframe and ease out keyframe and likewise you can basically customize your shortcuts inside of premiere pro and basically these are the shortcuts that i personally incorporate into my editing workflow in premiere pro so thank me later and please let me know if this has helped and when it comes to after effects there's again like three shortcuts that i always like to use the first shortcut is for pre-composing at default there's a shortcut for pre-compose which is Control shift plus c but instead of using that shortcut i have set my shortcut as d it's a one click button and all i do i select the layers that i need to make a pre-compose with and i press the button d and it will pre-compose with just one click on my keyboard and the second shortcut that i always like to use is for easing and again there's a default in build shortcut to make your keyframes easy in keyframes right and the problem is f9 shortcut is on my right hand side and since i'm actually holding my mouse with my right hand side i need to actually let go of my mouse click on my f9 button and then again use my mouse and that is kind of like time consuming so all i did was i added my shortcut onto the left hand side of my keyboard so the shortcut that i use to make my keyframes is in keyframes is two just the two number on my keyboard so i press that button it just makes my keyframes ease in and then i can go to my graph editor and i can just edit that and that is again a real time saving and a really convenient way for you to save time there are many shortcuts that you can use so make sure that you play with the shortcuts and add the shortcuts that you will be actually needing when you're actually editing the video and the second and probably the most important thing when it comes to actually building a workflow is to actually plan your edit and i'm not saying to actually write down how you're gonna edit the video all i'm saying is basically plan your video in your head this is something that i recently started to do and it has saved me countless hours of editing so as you can remember i have told you i edit my videos separately i edit my videos into sections right so basically once i'm like editing these sections i usually listen to the voiceover three to four times 
so once i'm like listening to this voice server in my head i'm automatically gonna get some ideas on how i'm gonna actually visualize or how i'm gonna actually edit that certain type of part in a way that feel engaged and creative so all i'm doing is while i'm listening to the voice server in my head i'm planning and visualizing on how i'm gonna edit the video before actually jump into after effects and start editing and trust me this will help you a lot of time and it will give you so much flexibility because once you're editing videos you will get stressed really easily and the best way for you to fix that is to get continuous ideas and the best way to get those continuous ideas is to plan your edit and to visualize that inside your head so once you jump into editing you already know what to do and how to actually visualize whatever the voice over is saying and again make sure that you do that if you are not doing so Keep in mind when you are editing the video you have the full control on the pace and how often and how fast you make the cuts will determine the flow and the pace of your video and which means you need to make sure that you are maintaining and you are controlling the flow according to the video that you are editing. The first thing that you need to understand is you are not editing the video for yourself. You are editing the video for the audience. So you need to make sure that the pace and the editing style that you choose when you are editing a video is the best choice for your audience because they came to watch the video to get the maximum value that they can get from whoever the person who is creating the video. They don't care about the person who is creating the video and let alone they don't even give a shit about the person who's actually editing the video so you need to make sure that you pace and choose the editing style to maximize the satisfaction of your audience when it comes to the pace make sure that you are not cutting out all the silences because if you cut out all the silences which means there's no breathing gap for the audience to understand what the creator is actually trying to say and then we have storytelling every video's retention is built on top of storytelling so you don't need to ruin it you need to support it with video editing and if your editing is something really distracting and highly paced then the audience will not gonna watch that and it will kill the retention so support the story with the visuals that you're gonna choose make sure that the motion graphics the animations whatever the hell that you include in the video needs to actually support the story that is built by the creator to maximize retention once you understand that then we can move on to the final step which is practice and feedback you see once you actually lay the foundation and once you actually start to learn all this advanced thing the next basic thing for you to actually improve with this skill is to actually practice a lot fail a lot and most importantly get feedback and there's one place that you can get the most valuable feedback which is from my community so i have built my discord community which you can join right now for completely free you can't just think that even though that you know all the basics and you know all the advanced techniques if you're not getting feedback from other people you can figure out if your video is actually good or not once you edit the videos upload that on social media and try to get feedback from other people and also upload your video on our discord community so people will actually give feedback on your edit and the video that you have made so if there's anything that people think that you can improve we can improve them to make better and high quality videos so i hope these five steps will actually lay the foundation for you to actually learn this skill of video editing in 2025 and if you want to know the most common youtube edit mistakes that i wish i knew when i actually started out make sure that you watch this video i will see you there bye bye